Alright, so I think it's time we finally talk about the Mandalorian Season 3 finale. The last two episodes I want to talk about. Let's just put this into a combo review. So, Episode 7, Chapter 23, The Spies. This is basically the Mandalorians are finally gathering together to finally take over Mandalore and regain the peace and start to build up towards the new tribe of Mandalore. So, this episode is pretty good. It was a major step up from the Guns for Hire. I didn't hate that episode. It was just not my favorite. And and so this episode opens with um the return of Kitty O'Brien's character, who um, apparently has a probe droid, where she's walking around Coruscant. We see like the depths of Coruscant, as we saw in the Clone Wars, and we see the return of Moff Gideon. So it looks like Moff Gideon's got some plans, and it looks like, from what we're seeing, it's like the remaining Imperial characters after the destruction of the second Death Star are now um, just trying to keep the Empire alive. Now we finally know. We see um, a cameo from um, General Hux's father, who's from the sequel trilogy. Well, General Hux, I meant the son, basically. Of General Hux. Wait, no, this fodder. Uh, you get the point. Um, and we also see um, Captain Pelion. So, Captain Pelion's from um, the Star Wars Expanded Universe, the Fraud Trilogy, and a bunch of uh, Star Wars novels. And he had a brief mention in the um, Star Wars Rebels the series finale. So, we finally see him in live action. Like, that's amazing. Like, Look how depth they are going into the EU. We even get a mention of Grand Admiral Fraun, which is set up for uh, Ahsoka, which I can't wait to see. And so, uh, looks like Moff Gideon's discussing their plans. Basically, they all have ideas of using clones for the Empire, and Moff Gideon's kind of like, uh, your clones are your obsession. But we know Moff Gideon is in the cloning. And we do later find out what his big plan was the whole time. And so meanwhile, the Mandalorians finally are uh, ready for Mandalore. Like I said, they're on this like boat thing where, when they finally get the Mandalore. The armor is leading the Mandalorians in the sky and Din and bo are on the boat with Grogu. But before they went, they went to go visit Grief Cargo. And it looks like um, Din bought the the IG droid head. And they rebuilt him. And, and Grogu basically gets his own uh, battle armor. Like his own bodysuit. Like an Iron Man suit, maybe. And the only way um, Grogu can talk, sort of, is pressing yes or no. And I thought that was pretty funny. Like, he's just walking around saying yes, yes, yes. And it's meant to be comical when he tries to buy fruit. And Din's like, Grogu, I'll pay for it. And he just keeps saying yes. But anyway, back to the Mandalorians. They're on the one planet, uh, Mandalore. And it looks like there's still a bunch of ruins. That's why they want to rebuild. And we do get this cool scene where the one dude, who I thought was a villain, I think you know who I'm talking about, it's the dude with the black hair, who's, um, who fought bo in the last episode. And it looks like he gets into a little quarrel with one, with Paz Vizsla, and over a game of chess. And guess what Grogu does? He, uh, stops the fight, and it just says, yes. Wait, no, he says no. And looks like Grogu's learning himself, and even Bogdan compliments Din on it. And Din's like he's learned himself. And so, meanwhile, uh, the Mandalorians f- discover when they finally get to the base is that there are actually it's an Imperial base under the Mandalore, even though there is still some life on there. It reminded me of uh, Fallen Order. The way that was done, with the the way you go into imperial palaces, and so the Mandalorians have actually been fooled. They've been put in. It was an ambush, and they get trapped in this one room. And uh, 
it looks like they have no choice. And then Jaren has to... He gets captured by these pr- sort of purge troopers that Moff Gideon created. And Moff Gideon's got some new armor. And it looks awesome. And it reminded me of the Darth Maul armor from the Clone Wars when he took over Mandalore. And so they take Din away. And then bo um uses the dark saber. She doesn't want to surrender it, but Moff Gideon really wants it. And then she um cuts open the slice for all the Mandalorians to get out, but Paz Vizsla decides to stay behind. And he says, This is the way. And now Paz Vizsla fights a, a bunch of purge troopers and kills most of them. And and when, but after that, we see these Praetorian guards. From, they look like the ones from the last Jedi, but instead of lightsaber blades, they got like tasers. And we know how it was gonna go. Din, I mean, Paz sacrificed himself, and then he died, unfortunately. And that's the episode. I thought more would happen, but no, that's the episode. What a cliffhanger. Honestly, this episode was pretty good. Like, it was slowly building up towards what is to come for the finale so uh yeah the finale basically continues where we left off Bogotan's leading the Mandalorians to uh stop the Empire and we're and it looks like the one dude I'm sorry I don't know his name he um I think he plans to sacrifice himself by literally dropping the the Mandalorian ship onto the Onto the Mandalorian floor to stop Moff Gideon and his forces, and the way Din gets out of the situation he's in, he basically takes down the the Purge troopers themselves. And Grogu, I thought Grogu was gonna save him. I was a little taken aback by that. Oh well, it was nice seeing Din f- take care of himself since he can. And I for sure thought he was they were gonna rip his helmet off, but they don't. And I think Grogu catches up to Din and then the two on their own for a bit. And we also see R5. So R5 is adorable in this episode. He's able to take down the mouse droids, take down the shield. He has rocket boosters like R2-D2. And so far he's a good help for Din. And I hope the droid's okay after this finale. I wonder how he got out of there. Who knows? I have to rewatch it. So that's enough about R5. Love you, R5. And so Din and Grogu get into a lot of pickle situations where they see a bunch of purge troopers through this gateway. It reminded me of the Phantom Menace. That's what I liked about it. Like the laser gates. And then Din's like, I'll take care of these. And then Din just just straight up destroys these purge troopers and he's struggling like and like even after all he is human after all and even he's not perfect as a Mandalorian and I think later as the battle goes on bo finally catches up to Moff Gideon and he is just wants the Darksaber and like he, we get this cool scene where he turns on this like staff thing like, like it kind of reminded me of the Magnet Card staffs, and the two have a little fight. Meanwhile, Grogu has to fight the Batorian guards, and he he ends up getting his IG droid destroyed. And I just love the way he hops, and I almost thought he was he was gonna struggle, take these guys down, but then swoops in. I I was worried he was gonna die because a lot of people are saying he's gonna die in this episode, but he didn't. And he takes down the Batorian guards. And I think Grogu didn't get out of there with bo And then the ship from earlier. The guy, I thought he was going to die. But no, he escapes to the last second. And the ship collides and then destroys the, the Purge Troopers. And Moff Gideon, I think he's still out there. And we do find out what Moff Gideon's plan is. Basically, he was developing clones of himself to, um, basically rule the galaxy, so it all makes sense, and he wanted to use, that's why he wanted Grogu, so he can use his force powers to, 
create a Moff Gideon army. It seemed like a cliche plan at the end, because I love Moff Gideon. Like how I love Giancarlo Espinito. <laughs> Sorry if I said his name wrong. He's really great as Moff Gideon and Gus from Breaking Bad. But I felt like the plan just, I, didn't, I just felt it was cliche, to say the least. But mm, Moff Gideon does destroy the Dark Sand, which was a big bummer. But maybe they'll rebuild it. I think what saves the day is uh, Grogu uh, saves um, Din and Bo-Katan. And, and Grogu's learning. That's what I like about Grogu. He's finally learning. Uh, and so he blocks the fire from colliding on the Bo-Katan and Din. And they basically get out of there. And then everything comes to an end. Mandalorian is refounded. Um, Grogu becomes adopted by Din, even though he kind of was earlier in the show. That didn't really make sense. And so the episode then shifts to Din. Looks like he's going to be helping out the rebellion, the New Republic, but he's not going to be like part of it. He's just going to occasionally help them. And I think Din somewhat gets peace because the IG droid is rebuilt. He's finally back together. And then Reef Cargo gives Din a home. He can finally just relax with Grogu. Then the episode ends. So that's the. And Gro, it ends with Grogu flowing the frog, of course. So that's the Mandalorian season three. A pretty. I was confused. I was pretty off and on with the season because I couldn't tell where the story was going at times. But overall, it was a fun season. I definitely look forward to doing season four. So uh, tell me, what do you think of season three of The Mandalorian? And check out my review on it on the Brent Age of Grogu and the Little Blue. Check out those guys. So with that said, thanks for watching and may the force be with you always.